Vince Edwards was born in the Brownsville section of Brooklyn, and in his youth, he aspired to be an athlete more than an actor. But when an operation for appendicitis cut short his bid for a spot on the U.S. Olympic swim team, he turned his ambition to acting. He was classmates at the American Academy of Dramatic Arts with Grace Kelly, Ann Bancroft, and John Cassavetes. After a few bit parts in the early 50s as a contract player with Paramount, Edwards made his mark playing hoodlums in films like Rogue Cop, The Night Holds Terror, and most notably in The Killing, the 1956 Hollywood directing debut of fellow New Yorker Stanley Kubrick. After Murder by Contract, Vince Edwards and director Irving Lerner reteamed for another low-budget thriller, City of Fear, released in 1959. Edwards played an escaped convict who busts out of San Quentin with a canister of heroin, only to learn it's actually Cobalt-60, a radioactive substance that could infect all of Los Angeles. Well, given that he played mostly crooks and crazies in his young career, it's remarkable that Bing Crosby Productions chose Edwards to star in a new medical drama it pitched to ABC in the fall of 1961, Ben Casey. The public loved the intense crusading surgeon, and Edwards was nominated for an Emmy. Before long, he'd added a singing career to the mix. Now, all this success was derailed, Edwards later admitted, by a gambling addiction that almost bankrupted him. Herschel Bernardi, who played George, was another native New Yorker who enjoyed a busy career as a character actor. And he, too, played the title role in a successful TV series, Arnie, which aired on CBS in the early 70s. Phil Pine, who played his exasperated cohort Mark, managed to work for several decades in film and television without getting his own TV series. As for the women in Murder by Contract, this was the lone film role for Caprice Toriel, who gives an effectively high-strung performance as the assassin's target. But she's a mystery, so if anyone knows about her, spill it on the Noir Alley Facebook page or Twitter feed. This was also the movie debut of Kathy Brown, who's memorable as Mary, secretary by day, escort by night. Like Claude, Mary is willing to take risks to earn extra money. Unlike Caprice Toriel, Brown kept on acting, mostly in television, often co-starring with her husband, Darren McGavin. Director Irving Lerner went on to have an eclectic career, working as an editor on Spartacus and Steppenwolf, producing Custer of the West, director Robert C. Admack's last American film. He directed 14 episodes of Ben Casey, and his feature films as a director were wildly disparate. Studs Lonigan, Cry of Battle, and The Royal Hunt of the Sun. Martin Scorsese, who cited Murder by Contract as a major influence, hired Lerner in 1977 to be supervising editor on New York, New York. And when Lerner died before the film's release, Scorsese added an on-screen dedication to it, with our gratitude and respect. Lastly, a word about Perry Botkin, who composed the score to Murder by Contract, which you probably won't be able to get out of your head all week. Botkin began as a guitar prodigy in the 1920s, and for several decades he played with many supreme musicians, among them Hoagie Carmichael, Glenn Miller, the Dorsey Brothers, Benny Goodman, and Paul Whiteman. For almost 20 years, he was the musical director for Bing Crosby and he still found time to put his musical signature on a late-era film noir. FYI, his son, Perry Botkin Jr., kept up the tradition, creating dozens of themes for movies and television, none more famous than the one he composed with Barry Dvorzon for the soap opera The Young and the Restless. It became a huge hit as Nadia's theme after ABC's Wide World of Sports put it over a montage of Romanian gymnast Nadia Comaneci's performances. Well, that's it for this show. Hope to see you here next week when we'll celebrate Father's Day, Sam Fuller style, as Cliff Robertson relentlessly tracks down the gangsters who offed his old man. You won't want to miss Underworld USA. See you next week.